patience and a lot of determination. Twitter is one tool you can use, and it's, it's, I'll get into this a little bit, but it's a great public square, especially in terms of news, to call people out. And one of the most important calling people out is who do they care, who do they, whose opinions did that target care about? And so making sure to bring those people into the conversation. So for example, if it's a mayor, it's, it's his constituents, it's city councils, maybe other mayors, uh, depending on your topic. So there's a lot of ways to do it and there's a lot of ways to be creative with it and you should consider it one tool and not the be all and the end all. Um, so is everybody ready to get started? Can we record this? I have a lot of people that couldn't be here today. Can oh, we record? It, it does seem to be recording. Let me just um, say hello and thank you to everyone. Sorry, I've been having problems getting online. Um, and I just wanted to say why I thought, why I feel that this is so important. And actually, I just had a little example of this. So I needed to get hold of the American Planning Association. Can you all see me? Some of you have frozen. No, you're fine. Yeah, okay. I need to get hold of the American Planning Association. who was a low-level person who was writing us very um, unhelpful emails, and I needed to get an answer quickly. And I went on to Twitter and tweeted, and Susan backed me up with a retweet of, of that Twitter. <laughs> of that tweet and um, we got their chief operating officer immediately. Um, so it does seem that Twitter can be a very powerful tool from my perspective from higher ground and it'd be good to talk about this more broadly. I'm interested in it for two reasons. First is that we are using it and have used it on specific campaigns where we're targeting someone who is ignoring us and we need to get their attention. And so we can bombard them with the storm. Um, and the second thing is it shows our collective might. So it allows us to help each other in our campaigns and show that we're a force together. Um, and actually there's a third reason that it also allows us to get the backing of larger national nonprofits who don't quite know otherwise how to help us but could certainly interested in, in, in retweeting and showing support for our campaigns. And now uh, we, we did one small Twitter storm a couple of weeks ago that was very successful and we got all the national organizations supporting us and retweeting. So thank you very much. Um, and uh, before Michelle gets going, and thank you so much, Michelle. So Michelle has set up our first, and she's doing this entirely voluntarily, she set up our first Twitter campaign for Rosewood Strong, and now she's uh, helping us on our one in Charleston. I'm so very grateful to her, and I was going to say something else, but I can't remember what it is. Um, and she has this incredible background experience in running such campaigns. So it, it's really been quite a privilege. There are many people who can use Twitter, but using it in a squilled, skilled way, um, as I have discovered Michelle is able to do is something much rarer and so it's really quite a privilege to have her expertise and support for us. Okay, I'm going to hand over to you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's a privilege for me as well. Um, I get a lot of juice out of helping people find their voice and making it louder. All right, I'm going to share my screen. I have a bit of a presentation, but I'm also going to be doing a lot of demo and you should all feel free to ask questions as we go. And I know a lot of people learn well by seeing things being done. So I'm going to, I'll go back and forth between some basic information and then showing you how it works. And now I'm going to share my screen. I'm just going to share my screen so I can bounce around. All right, does everyone see my presentation? Yes, and just to reiterate, um, I, I really would, if you don't understand anything, just interject as this, as this conversation goes along versus waiting till the end, I recommend. Absolutely. And please know that you do not need to absorb everything in this one sitting. I'm more than happy to be on hand for reinforcement, for email, for whatever you guys need. And we can have a session two. Okay. So welcome to the social media training. 
Um, very quickly, let's go around and share, if you could say your name, where you are, and what social media accounts you have and your level of comfort with them. And first one who's willing to go, go. And then pass it to the next. I can go first. Hi, I'm David Southgate here at Pense Puerto Rico. Um, I have LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, and that other one that begins with a P that I don't know how to use. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, I guess I'm comfortable with um, LinkedIn and Facebook and mostly use Twitter to stalk um, political enemies and, um, and um, amplify messages of um, political folks that I know. Thank you, David. Could you pick someone else to go next? Sure, how about Gabriela? Oh, muted. Hi. Hi, thank you. Um, I have LinkedIn. I have uh, Facebook, very comfortable with both of them. Um, I have had a Twitter training before. This is a, a big refresher because I've only used it about three times. Um, and somebody has been asking to follow me on Pinterest. I think it was, but I don't know how to use it. So that's it. Um, Pass it to the next. Cynthia? Um, we use Twitter and Facebook extensively and just, I have not done what you call a Twitter storm, uh, but I've had the best results ever with Twitter and Facebook. Um, I have a personal LinkedIn account, so I don't know how to do one for our organization. I haven't even thought about that. Uh, we have a website and, but the best thing of best results we've ever had is using Twitter and um, Facebook. Thank you. Could you pick the next person? <laughs> Sorry, I was distracted. Um, I'm Susan with the Citizens Committee for Flood Relief, and I use Facebook the most. I'm able to get on Twitter and, and show a little bit, but I'm not real sure what I'm doing. Um, I'm not on LinkedIn. I'm not on anything like that, but okay. I try all the time. That's all you need to do. Okay, would you like to pick the next person? Um, yeah, uh, Gloria. Hello. Um, use Facebook a lot. Uh, and Instagram. I did use Twitter when I was um, running for office, uh, but I haven't been using it since because I can't remember the password. <laughs> but I'm a videographer and I do a lot of videos and things like that and post them. Fantastic. Would you like to pick the next person? Oh, and I'm in Pensacola. Thank you. <laughs> How about Susan? Have you gone yet? I think you're muted. I have gone. I was from DeSoto, Missouri. Fire away. What's your comfort level with social media accounts? Um, I've already said you see my husband come in to bring me a drink and <laughs> it's crazy. But um, I do Facebook. And I'm able to back up Harriet on um, Twitter, but I still need lots of help. No problem. That's what we're here for. Virginia, how about you? I've seen you a lot on Facebook. Yes, you have seen me on Facebook. Um, that's where I'm most comfortable on Facebook. Uh, I'm in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and um, Stop the Flooding now has a Facebook account and a Twitter account, but um, I have not participated in any Twitter storms because um, I don't really know what to do. So that's why I'm here uh, to learn that. And uh, if there are other accounts that are effective, I have a personal Instagram account, but uh, do not have one with Stop the Flooding Now and am very unfamiliar with LinkedIn. So okay. I'm to learn. Thank you. Who else hasn't gone? Has DD gone? 
no, I'm, I'm just joining. Um, my apologies. I was just getting off another call. Um, no problem. Welcome. So um, we're doing name town and state with social media accounts. So my name is Dee Dee Green. I'm um, in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I, I only have um, a Facebook page so that I can be an administrator for my jobs Facebook account. Um, I don't personally use. I, I can post some pictures to Facebook and Instagram and that's about um, that's about it for me in social media. Thank you. Who else has any gun? Has Franny gone? Franny? Have you gone? Um, it's Franny, Charleston, South Carolina, and um, I use, I just started trying Twitter since Harriet Festing had mentioned about the storm. But I mean, I've used it before, and um, so I've tried a few things. I'm not very, um, I'm not as acclimated as I could be. I use a lot of email, and I use a lot of Facebook. Okay. And I, then I text, text the mayor's and the mayor's wife on a regular basis. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Has Paul well, gone and Carl? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Paul Nimberg. I'm with Equity Legal Services uh, out of the greater St. Louis area. Um, and I'm fairly familiar with uh, pretty much most social media. Um, I have, I got away from it for a while just because I really just don't like the effect of it. But you know, now that I've been getting more into organizing, um, community organizing, I kind of realized it's a necessary evil. And so I, especially Twitter, I got away from that hard, but um, it's a really useful tool to, you know, get in touch with uh, elected officials. And so I'm going to get, you know, more familiarized with it from a professional standpoint. Fantastic. Sounds like we're all about at the same level, which is one of the things I was hoping to get a sense of. This is great. So I'm going to go over the basics of Twitter and then um, I'll talk a little bit about a storm, but really it's just everybody doing it all at once. <laughs> all right. So here we go. Speaking during the training, please remember to say your name and so everyone knows who's speaking and please speak one at a time so everyone can hear. And that's in reference to questions. Please feel free to interrupt. Twitter is kind of um, a place where your attention bounces from one thing to the next. So I'm very used to it. <laughs> so we're going to learn how to use Twitter's Activism, how to sign up, how to do some basic functions, including how to use hashtags and tags, and how to tweet and retweet. OK. So a lot of you may be asking, why Twitter? So I just put together a thing to help you understand why it's important. Twitter and Facebook have very different environments. Facebook is more like your neighborhood community kind of sharing what's going on locally. Twitter is more national and more news orientated. So it's where people go to stay in the know. And a lot of people feel that's a really important part of their life. So that's where news breaks. And that's where activists keep us informed and what's behind the story. Twitter spreads information faster than any other social media platform and farther. That's why our politicians have accounts there. They want to stay in the know. They want to know who's interested in what. They want to put out their good messages about the good work they're doing, and they can be called out if that, in fact, is not true. So it's today's version of the public square. And um, oops, sorry. Ah, my computer is obsessed, possessed. There we go. Um, and the good news is that we can have a really large audience. So we can call out anyone and get anyone around the world involved. Now, granted, with public um, officials that are elected, the most important voices are their community, their constituents, but getting people to share and amplify your message can help call them out. So it's the best platform for real-time engagement. People interact, they retweet. It's very easy to interact with it. Um, some of the other platforms can be a little more complicated. And then there's a fun function you can use, too, if you want to inform people about a topic, Twitter chats. And I've been meaning to talk to Harriet about that. It's a great place for knowledge sharing. It's, in, it's very interactive and it's very instantaneous and people love them. So if you have a campaign, uh, you want to increase awareness, we can look at doing Twitter chats to make sure people get involved. Any questions on that so far? Okay. So I'm hoping you all have accounts and I believe you all do. 
Um, but I'm happy to share this PowerPoint with everyone afterwards, and there's some little tips about how to sign up. And right away after you sign up, if your account is fairly new, one of the things you want to do is get followers, and it's extraordinarily easy to do that. A lot of people tell me, well, there's no point in me tweeting, I don't have any followers. If you spend 10 minutes following people, they will follow you back. That's how you get followers, basically. So of course you want to follow the Anthropocene Alliance. You want to search for thinkers like you in your community or nationally. People who are interested in the same causes. And I'll show you how to do some searching on some keywords to help you find those people. You want to keep an eye on your reporters. Anybody who's covering flooding or climate change, definitely follow them. They'll give you some great information. And what you're doing is when you follow, the, um, these accounts will show up in your feed. So as you scroll through the feed, you can see everybody you're following what they're talking about, which is wonderful. Um, and of course, your politicians. By all means, follow them. Uh, one thing about politicians, you want to be careful. They have a habit of co-opting messages and saying, oh, look, I talked to this represent. See how, what a good politician I am. Be sure to, to monitor that and make sure they don't get away with it and call them out. <laughs> uh, that happens a lot. Follow your community members, your neighbors, your friends, your family. And at the end of this, I'd like everyone to, um, or during this session, to share your handles in the chat room so we can all stay connected. Any questions on that? I have, I have, a, question. I have a question. You said be careful that politicians don't co-opt our, our post. Can you go into a little more explanation on how we can stop them from doing that? Um, calling them out on Twitter, basically taking that post and retweeting it and saying this is what actually happened, just keeping everything very transparent. So say for example, you meet with a politician and then after that, they post a beautiful picture of you all in the room together and say, we made a ton of progress on this and I'm listening to my community members. And if, if that's true, fantastic, thank them. Uh, gratitude is one of the strongest cur currencies on social media. So anytime you have an opportunity to thank uh, someone who's heading in the right direction and reinforcing what they're doing, please do so because they don't get that kind of support. So either thank them or call them out on the mistake. Actually, you know, Senator, we have some more to talk about and we look forward to our second meeting. You can keep it positive, um, but let, let people know right away and they'll see it too if you reply to their tweet. And that will um, keep them from doing that. that. That's happened a lot with organizations that I work with. You just stay on top of it and continue to communicate about what needs to be done. Okay, great. So tweeting, really easy. Um, you go to your feed and you look for what's happening at the top. You start clicking on it. Uh, you click on it and you start typing. Sorry, you have 280 characters. This is an example of a, a tweet we did, uh, I did, <laughs> when we were preparing for the Rosewood Estates campaign. Okay, so let me um, see what's next and then I will demonstrate a couple of things. Okay. So tagging, there's a lot of confusing with tagging and hashtagging, and probably the nomenclature is part of the problem. But tagging an organization is literally, um, think of it as tapping them on the shoulder, right? So we use the at sign, and this means that it will show them, show up in their feed. Then also, whenever you enter the name of an organization and you tag it and tweet, note that it's hyperlinked. So if someone is reading that tweet and they're interested in the organization, they can click on that and follow, that kind of thing. Okay, so notifications are really important. So here we go. And hashtags. I'm going to um, try to navigate. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Navigate to my Twitter account and start playing around. And please, again, feel free to ask questions. So when you're on your feed, your home is where is your feed? Basically, it's all and my network is acting up. We're having some bands of Laura go over us. I'm in New Orleans. Here we go. So it's acting a little kludgy. That's it. Okay. Um, so this is what everybody is talking about. This is something I do every morning. I look at my feed and scroll down and see what's up. I have clearly a lot of New Orleans uh, based things going here. And there's an emergency right now in Lake Charles, which a lot of people are tweeting about. I'm just going to give Beth a little support here. Um, and there you go. So what I just did was I just liked and retweeted her tweet. And I wanted to show you something else I just did. Sorry, I do things automatically because I've been doing this so long. If I want to look at an individual tweet or for that matter, an individual Facebook post um, and have a link to it, all you need to do is type, uh, click on the timestamp. 
So I just click where it said 12 minutes and that means I'm on Beth's tweet solo. And if I go up here to the URL, that's a direct link to her tweet. That can help you if you're ever sharing something um, in a variety of platforms, okay? And when I scroll down to the bottom, I have the opportunity, I'm just gonna undo this and redo it, to like, just click on the heart, and to retweet, I can just click there. Now, um, you can also retweet with comment. So when you do click on that, you get another option to add a comment above the tweet. Um, this is criminal. Immediately. Sorry, I have very strong feelings about petrochemicals in Louisiana. Um, so there we go. Uh, and if I want to do that, I'm just going to hit retweet. It's putting these people at a great deal of risk. Uh, okay. So those are the basic functions of tweeting and retweeting. Now, if I wanted to make sure that Anthropocene Alliance perhaps pays attention to this, I might go here to type a comment. And if I want to tag an organization or get somebody's attention or uh, local news, I can do that right here. Now, there's a little trick when you are tagging an organization. If you have it at the very beginning of the tweet, it tends to be private. Twitter considers it a message directly to the account. If you want to make it public, you either add a period or a word, hey, Anthropocene. And as you can see, because I'm following them, as soon as I start typing the name, it pops right up and all I need to do is select it. Here's some information for you. It's a typo, but you get the idea. So that would be one way to get um, another organization's attention on a tweet that you care about. You can hit it in the reply. You can retweet with comment. You can add the tag there. And when I do that, they will automatically be notified. I'm not going to do that because this is really the topic at hand. Um, but if they were to click on their notifications tab, they would see um, my tweet there and they could click on it. So Kelly liked my tweet about this and she retweeted it. <clears throat> okay. One thing I do is on my feed, if anybody retweets, I make sure I'm following them. They are, we obviously share something in common. So I can click on the name at any time and I'm already following Kelly, but I wasn't, I would click on follow. You can also direct message people just by clicking here and saying, hi Kelly, thanks for your support. Okay. Uh, it's good to have conversations. So, Social media, uh, people kind of consider it a digital platform, you just do your thing and it takes care of itself. Uh -uh. It's about social relationships. You need to build relationships online and that's by sending messages, by supporting the things that they're doing, um, by keeping the conversation alive, okay? Particularly if you're running an account for an organization, always pay attention to your messages, always answer them. Um, if you get any flack, you can address people um, directly, be transparent. An interesting um, feature of politicians' Twitter accounts, because they are political elected officials, they cannot ban anyone from their Twitter account because in a way they are um, impacting freedom of speech. <laughs> so uh, that gives you some leeway on their accounts. Granted, you wanna follow Twitter's rules, be polite, be direct, um, but keep the language clean and don't threaten anyone and you'll be fine. But if someone gives you a hard time, one thing you can do is you can hide their account. I recommend that over banning. Banning tends to create a grudge factor and they come at you stronger. So if you hide it, they don't really know that that's happening. They can see it and their friends can still see it. And so it keeps the grudge from happening. But it's only if it's, you know, I ran an account for an organization that was a group of mothers. If anybody swore, I would hide kind things because <laughs> we were a family page. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, I must be doing a good job or you must be completely overwhelmed. Um, fantastic, so we've gone over tagging and now we're gonna talk about hashtagging. So hashtagging is a, um, where I'm gonna be showing my age because I know how it started. Um, way back when, when Twitter was in the beginning, it was very different than it is now. And basically, sorry, that's my phone alert. I'm just gonna turn that volume down. 
um, basically what would happen is we would all have our individual accounts and we would tweet. And if somebody wanted to reply to the tweet, it actually showed up in their feed. So it was really hard to follow a conversation without bouncing around from account to account. So some, and I have to Google this to figure out who did it, some genius came up with the idea of using hashtags, which are searchable and can bring a conversation together. For example, right here, uh, this person's got climate change as a hashtag. If I click on it, <clears throat> that's one way to initiate a search. Uh, it brings up all the tweets that have to do with climate change. And you'll notice that the first thing up here in the menu is top. So it probably brings the one that has the most activity and most interaction. If you're following a Twitter storm, like I often do, I will hover on this tab quite often, which is latest. So here's where you can find out the latest tweets that are happening around climate change. And that looks fairly disturbing. Uh, country has a lot of work to do. Um, so the other thing I could do is I could just type a hashtag at any time. Now hashtags begin with the numeric sign and then they have no spaces and no punctuation. The uh, punctuation will break. So you need to be a little creative. If you're using words like we've done it, you know, leave out the apostrophe and people generally know what's going on. So again, I just did a search on fix flooding first and it brings the conversation together. I'm on the latest tab. So the most recent tweets have come up and uh, Franny's been busy and I've been retweeting her. <laughs> Okay, so those are the functions of the hashtag. It's best not to have more than three per tweet, otherwise it starts to look spammy and the, um, the algorithm will punish it a bit. Two is best, best to keep them short. Three words max usually works. Beyond that, it has to be really engaging. So you gotta come up with a catchy phrase. Um, it's important that it has to do with your campaign. It gets people the idea of the topic right away. So don't be too vague or too, um, you know, use words that don't really have anything to do with it just to be cute or creative. The thing about social media is you want to be transparent, straightforward and honest and have integrity in what you do. If you do that, people will follow you. They will listen to you. If you break that code, people will turn away from you faster than, you know, anything you can think of. <laughs> Any questions? Oh, David has raised his hand. I'm not sure if that's because you had a question, David. David, yeah, I, did, I did have a question. Hi. Um, thank you so much for, um, for doing this for us. Um, you know, I've always been curious about how people end up having like thousands of followers. I mean, I get excited, you know, when Carmen Julien like retweets me or something. Uh, or like something, but it never actually translates into followers also. So how does that happen? No problem. So a variety of ways. If someone is very popular and they retweet you, there's a chance that other people will retweet you and also be interested in what you had to say. And they will click on your account and follow. If they don't, if you have someone that you are, oh, here we go, um, Anthropocene Alliance, that you are interested in, they're following you. But what I would also do is I would go to their page and find who they're following and who's following them. So I will click here and I will start investigating if these organizations are something I'm interested in. Generally, if you start following them, they will follow you back, particularly the smaller organizations. The national ones, they might not know this because they have thousands, but um, occasionally they do. Yeah, so the that's, way how, to that's how we got our first, you know, well, I, I've. I did that like literally for hundreds and that got me 50, 60 followers immediately. I mean, when I, we'll get onto the Twitter storm thing, but what interests me about the Twitter storm is that you don't need to have any followers at all and you can still make an impact. So what, there's almost like two functions. One is to start crafting your message and having a profile. The other one is to, you know, target something specific, get an action done. You don't need anyone for that. Um, that's true, although the followers that you have are likely to get involved in the campaign when they see it on their feed, so it doesn't hurt to have followers. Right, right, right. But you're right, you can jump on and start tweeting if your message resonates. And that's the thing too, with tweets, you need to be fairly concise, not as concise as it used to be, because they double the amount of characters, which is helpful sometimes. Um, but you need to be straightforward, 
you have about five to 10 seconds to capture someone's attention. One of the things I like to do with the flooding component is to make people realize that this could happen to them, right? So that making it um, so that they feel they have a stake in it, that their families could be exposed to this, that there are bad developments everywhere, that there's you know, mismanagement of land resources everywhere. And so given that, I don't know, 80%, 90% of the population in the United States lives on the coast, um, a lot of people are impacted. I don't know if that was the right percentage, but an extraordinary amount of people live on the, on the coast. River Network, yeah. Thanks for the new people. Okay. <laughs> so generally I recommend spending about 10 minutes looking at your feed in the morning, seeing who uh, is tweeting, following them. You'll find that they will follow you back and over time it will certainly grow. Oh, you've been growing too. Excellent. <clears throat> I started, I was working for um, an organization that was national. I was very quiet on my personal Twitter for a long time, but recently I've become much more active. And in the course of the weekend, I got about 40, 50 more followers. Um, just by clicking around and seeing who's following the organizations that I'm interested in, you get all kinds of ideas and connections and people you, would, you wouldn't ordinarily see. Was that helpful? Yeah, I went on to just the, the Twitter account of, of um, Rob Moore of NRDC because he's in a similar space to we are. And I just went through all his followers and uh, followed them. Yes, exactly. Uh, and it, it's kind of common courtesy. You'll be surprised how many follow you back. Okay. And, and then you might I, get... I unfollowed all the ones who didn't. <laughs> yeah, you can do that too. Um, and they will get a notification of that. You also, um, as you get more active, there's some bots and things out there. The way to recognize those, and let's see, do I still have, um, I might have one who was trying to follow me and I ignored. No, I can't find it right away. Um, generally what will happen, and I can't think of an example right away, but if you go to their account, you'll see that they have very few followers, that they haven't been online for very long and that there's no picture with their account, which is actually true of me too, but I'm gonna fix that soon. Um, so having a picture on your Twitter account is very helpful so people feel that there's a real person behind it. Um, and so bots don't generally have that, and that's one way. And also they have very few tweets. So if it looks like a relatively new account, it, it, it can be a little dodgy. Uh, they don't have a description, they look kind of anonymous, then don't follow back. And if you do, you can always unfollow them later. <clears throat> They have also received a couple of, how should we say, indecent proposals. Um, so just ignore those people. They will go away. Okay. You can block them. And basically, if those people are finding you and bots are finding you, that means you're getting some traction. So don't be discouraged. It's a good thing. Don't, you know, Twitter, social media, it can be a scary place, but it can also be an amazing place, right? In terms of what we can share, who we can get involved, the reach that we can have that we cannot have on the ground. It's an amazingly powerful tool. Do not be afraid of it. Just be cautious of how you're using it and just pay attention. You'll be all right. And I'll be here to protect you, don't worry. Oh, I just got a new phone. Okay. All right, any other questions? All right, let's see where I was in the presentation. Okay, so we've done liking, we've done retweeting. And um, the important thing too is when you're involved in a campaign, um, this is going over notifications, which I already shared, is to, um, I think I just completely lost my train of thought. Ah, yes. So generally with a Twitter storm, for example, we'll provide a bunch of sample tweets. And from my perspective, that's really helpful to get participation and to get people involved. However, if uh, it's really important that you try to use your own words. So take the idea of the sample tweet and, and make it your own or just tell your story. Uh, the human story is the most compelling thing out there on social media. It's the one thing that people will relate to. So people do not give money to organizations. People do not join organizations. People join groups of people and the people behind the organization is the driving force. So always keep that, those faces up front and the voice of someone who's actually living through a situation 
there is so much potential for stories of what all of you are experiencing in terms of flooding. Um, a picture and two sentences about having to leave your house or having to um, completely refurbish your living room or just the trials and tribulations dealing with the state. Those are the things people need to know about and they're incredibly compelling and people will come to your side to help. And those are the stories we need to share. Okay. So I don't have slides prepared for a Twitter storm, but I was more focused on teaching, tweet, teaching tweeting. What I ask each of you to do is please spend 10 minutes a day for the next five days on Twitter. Follow some more people, do a tweet, say, okay, I'm getting back on Twitter because I want to make change. Whatever you want to do. Tag Anthropocene Alliance if you would. Use a hashtag of your own creation or one that you feel is appropriate to your tweet. Um, at least every other day. So I'm asking you to go on Twitter for 10 minutes a day, look at your feed, do some tweeting and some retweeting. Um, tag one organization. Do, is that okay? I just did the removing the. Great idea. Um, and uh, generally get familiar and try to increase your followers. In terms of a Twitter storm, really what it is is getting everybody at once and we'll provide a page um, for any tweet storms coming up. It's a great resource for people who don't have a lot of time and they can just click a button and do a quick tweet, but also uh, people who are more engaged, original tweets are fantastic. Pictures are really important to include. Videos are gold. Um, so if you ever want to have some impact on a Twitter storm, one way to do it is a little uh, selfie video saying why you're involved in the cause and what you care about. I can be short to the point. Make sure your face is in focus. That's the most important thing. If people can see your eyes, they're happy and that they can hear. Audio is extremely important. Um, they will get frustrated if they can't hear what you're saying. So make sure you're in a relatively quiet area. That can be hard if you're out in the middle of a hurricane, for example, you're gonna get a lot of wind noise, but that will have enough drama to compensate and people will watch. So getting everybody together. Go I just want to interrupt you, but I, here, here's a sample page that we've just set up for the Charleston Twitter storm. And it gives you a bit of a background about why, it, why it's important, um, what you could do in one minute, two minutes or longer, five minutes. And then I thought this was a really cool thing. You can literally press that button and assume my internet works well. Uh, la, la, there we are, and all you need to do is tweet it. Um, but she's also, also, oh, I, I need to get back in order to get to okay. it. Um, but she also did some sample graphics as well. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get back to it. But so she did some, some sample graphics. Uh, so that's kind of what a campaign page looks like. I'm sorry, I interrupted, but I just thought it would be helpful. Harriet, if you could say, uh, send us on the chat the example of the um, campaign page, that would be helpful. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, those are handy. So, I mean, basically, I'm approaching as an organizer on Twitter, and I know people are coming to this campaign with varying levels of ability and time and knowledge. And so you want to give them everything they need. The trick about social media is it's a negotiation, right? People want to stay informed, they want the information to take action on the things they care about. If you have that handy, they will, they will follow the action. If you, um, you know, do it sloppily and they don't really feel like they know what they're doing, they will back off. So my approach is to give them a summary, make sure people understand why we're all gathered. And then for people who have two minutes, busy mothers, people working, et cetera, you can just click the button. And then for other people, you can download the images and you can compose your own personal tweet. And it can be about the same kind of messaging, but from your own perspective, adding the hashtags helps everything to get sorted. And then everybody who's participating ideally will search on the hashtags and retweet everybody else and like all the posts. So, uh, and basically from running a Twitter storm, that's what I spend the majority of my time doing, searching on the hashtags and making sure everything gets tweeted and retweeted. And we try to do it during a compressed period of time. What that allows is for the hashtags to possibly trend in our area. 
Twitter, you know, we won't twent, twent, <laughs> we won't twent nationally, but um, there are also local trending capacity uh, within Charleston, within um, Virginia Beach, et cetera, there's a page that will say, oh, this is trending in Virginia Beach. And so that will definitely get politicians' attention. Um, they watch what's trending, they watch what people care about, just like they watch um, letters to the editor and their newspapers, which are ex another extremely powerful tool. They know that if someone took the time to write to the, to the letter to the editor that they really care about that topic, and there's probably 20 more right behind them. Um, so politicians also watch those pages very closely. So the idea is to trend and get attention. Um, it allows, Twitter will amplify anything that's trending. So we get a boost from the algorithm Good. and get more attention from elected officials. So you got a fact from the American Cancer Society. Questions? I think Virginia had one. Um, yeah, so I was wondering, um, does the Twitter platform, does it combine with any other platform? Like when you post on Instagram, it'll go to your Facebook feed so you don't have to like mul make multiple posts? No, Facebook and Instagram are owned by Facebook. So that's why we have the partnership between them and you can post uh, across platforms. The only things that allow you to do that are um, things like Hootsuite and some of the other programs. But the good news is copy and paste will do the trick. The other thing is you don't really want the same post on Facebook and Twitter because they really are different platforms and appeal to sort of a, a different mentality. So you want to be quicker, news cutting, breaking news, that kind of thing on social media and you want to cut right to the quick on the topic. Facebook, you can be a little more conversationalist. Does that answer your question? And so it might, from my perspective uh, of higher ground, it might be worth just saying how it worked with Rosewood Strong. Um, and how it might work with Charleston. So with Rosewood Strong, we wanted HUD to release funding for homes to be bought out. And we had been told that their money was stuck at HUD. Uh, and so we were tagging in their elected officials um, and HUD to say, please release the money. Um, as a Twitter storm, it worked like really well. It was my first ever experience of it. It was just before, I forget the hurricane, but it was as, as, I, um, as And we got a lot of national attention and retweeting and everything. Um, it wasn't so great in terms of us achieving any goal. Um, and I think maybe a phone call to HUD uh, might have probably been more sensible and we have since done that. Uh, so, you know, Twitter has its place, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't um, replace anything else like phone calls and emails. Um, and also we hardly had any residents. So your job, you know, as Michelle said, the most powerful thing is resident stories and their photos. So really your job is to get your fellow members on Twitter. And I'm not sure if you said this, Michelle, 20 tweets is enough to get the attention of an elected official if they start to get that kind of, um, uh, you know, bombardment. Um, so, and, and what we're trying in Charleston, you know, that's a much more coordinated, Harriet Revis is, is here and she's part of the Charleston team and that's, you know, involving an expert scientist, uh, potentially a lawyer, um, working alongside a team of res residents who are doing op-eds and um, uh, webinars and phone calls and emails. So the Twitter storm is just going to be one part of a much bigger campaign. And that's obviously the way to do it. And that's the way we would like to increasingly work with you once you've kind of pinpointed the thing that you are fighting Gabrielle, I'm looking quickly at you right now. And once you know that you've got the, so in terms of the Charleston one, you know, the decisions are just being made now, looks as though might already be starting to influence things in a good way and just start to do a Twitter storm and get that we have to get the tone just right. They may or may, might be supportive of us. So we've got to rewrite some of those tweets on that page. Um, and then, of course, when we do the Charleston campaign, 
uh, you know, if you can all retweet, then it starts to become a national thing. And if I get, you know, our partners involved as well. And so that's important, not just because it gets a lot of national attention, but because everybody feels supported. You know, if you're just doing it on your own and it's so it's so depressing <laughs> as Franny's been doing some soul tweets recently, you know, she needs a bunch of allies and, and concentrating it in a few hour period is a way to do it. Absolutely. All very well said. That's a lot of fun, but again, it should be a tool. Um, and sometimes it's more effective than others. There was an organization I was working with who was very concerned about gas leaks. And they came up, you know, adding humor and an event on the ground, which we can't really do right now, but this was one way to do it. Um, you know, if you're going after a politician, a full onslaught of people at the door, people sending emails, people tweeting and people calling is, is the way to, to let them know. Basically, a politician will take action if they feel you have support amongst your community. Like if enough people care about it, they will do something. So getting all those voices and, and what Twitter does and Facebook, it allows people who can't show up because they have to work or they have other responsibilities, but they can still participate. And then maybe doing, you know, a Facebook Live to show them what's going on in the office. And so there's all kinds of ways to do that. But one time, these ladies were really concerned about gas leaks. And so they came up with a method of tagging the gas leaks. They had information about where gas leaks were based on reporting in an organization that had mapped them all out. And so combining all those resources, they actually went out and they were dressed up in t-shirts and they had signs and everywhere there was a, a gas leak, they put up a sign and they took pictures of it and they tweeted it and everybody retweeted it. By four o'clock that afternoon, we heard from National Grid because um, we were at this all day, literally tweeting our little hearts out. Um, and that started a conversation with the utility about how to address the leaks, how to go after the biggest ones first, how to clean up the air. And that started a collaboration that actually built a tool that helped to measure gas leaks more effectively. So the things that can be done when you're calling people out on the public square can be amazing. Um, but you need to think of it as a strategy about the whole campaign. And sometimes a Twitter storm is just to get people used to tweet tweeting too. I considered that when we did for Rosewood, it was very spontaneous. We hadn't gotten a chance to reach out to all the community members, but because the hurricane was approaching, it was very timely and Harry was like, let's do it now. And I was like, great. And all the allies came together and, and for the spontaneity, uh, the way we did that, I was amazed at the result. So with the kind of back end work, you can really have a good punch. I can talk about this forever, but I don't want to take up any more of your time. Any questions? Either I'm a good teacher or everybody's thinking about something else. <laughs> I have a question. For, to insert a photo or a graphic or something like that, you just copy and paste it or is there another way to do it? I will take you there now. So I'm gonna share my screen and go back to my Twitter feed really quickly. Thank you, because that was one thing I hadn't covered. Here we go. Okay. So when you hit the tweet button, you have an opportunity right down here. This one uh, adds image. And when I click on it, usually it gives you a cue what it's doing too. Uh, there's so many images to choose from. Let's see. There we go, this friend of mine. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and just tweet that. I gotta move this because it's in the way. So I choose the image and it generally resizes it. There's a whole bunch of theories about what's the appropriate size for Twitter. Um, the, Pictures that come off your camera phone might be a little too large, but it should be all right. Um, it should resize it automatically. So I've added the image and now I'm going to, this is my dear friend, Hello, on her birthday. And another thing that I don't, I haven't gotten into too much on a basic training is that's very popular is to use, is it letting me do it? The little emoticons. Okay, sorry, it, it's raining really hard right now. And I don't know if you know the rules about New Orleans and rain, you don't get no, any internet. Um, here we go. So I can add, you know, hands up and support. I can add smiley faces. Emoticons have, um, they boost tweets. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tweet. 
So they're fun to add if you have time to think about it. And if I go to my profile, now we can see that tweet. Sometimes when you post an image, it might be clipped. Um, you know, people take uh, the long, the, um, the portrait view on their phone. And when they post it, the image is so large that you only see people's stomach and then you need to click on the image to see the whole face. Don't worry about it. Everybody does it. Don't let that stop you from doing it. Okay. And the same thing would be a video. So that little menu allows you to add video as well. You just need to select the file. You can add GIF, GIFs, however you want to pronounce that, emoticons, uh, and this, what is that? Oh, right. Oh, this is the poll, a new feature. You can do polling, which I found interactive. I videos really difficult to do. They only seem to do short videos. I don't know if that's changed. Yeah, the limit is one minute. Um, and it's good to make sure you stick within that or you can trim it on the fly. When you're loading it, you have an opportunity to trim it. You can pick the best part. So one way I would address that uh, if the video is longer is I would put for promotion, I would put a segment on Twitter and then provide the link to click through to see the whole thing. And Facebook is fun. Facebook does not like you to send people somewhere else. Facebook wants you to stay within Facebook. So one way to deal with that, if you posted a video, of course, you don't have any limit on length there, but if you posted a video there and someone asked a question, you could reply, find out more information at this link. If you do it in the comments, Facebook's algorithm will be, client, will be kinder. I'm sorry, go ahead, Harriet. So I, would, I might be repeating myself, um, but so I would like us to do more coordinated campaigns where we're trying to win something, get attention for something, uh, you know, with higher ground members. Um, as you're on Twitter, just, I will do, I do tend to retweet, particularly people tag and from Seeing Alliance, um, but for, for the coordinated campaigns is the stuff that particularly excites me when we were all to you know, pick a time and a day and we've kind of well set up and we're trying to win some kind of fight and we uh, will know at the end of it whether or not we've succeeded in getting some attention. And so, you know, both of those are opportunities where we'd like to work with you. And not just that, where we would really love to have your help supporting each other. And videos, by the way, are gold, little selfie videos. And I, I know people, I've worked with an entire organization of women. I've never met more bashful people in my life, but um, a selfie video does not need to be perfect. A selfie video just needs to show what you feel. People will forgive a lot. And they understand you're a real person shooting the thing with your phone. As long as they can hear what's going on, they'll even forgive blurry video. So um, I encourage everyone to at least one time over the next few days, record a selfie video just for practice. You don't have to post it, but just to get used to the idea of how to do it and get more comfortable with it. Um, if you make a mistake, if you say something, believe me, people are so forgiving. There are so many gaffes on Twitter, big greens do it. All the organizations, I see typos everywhere. Um, nobody's going to slam you for it. And even if they do in the next 30 seconds, someone will do something far more egregious that will get their attention and they'll go away. But don't be bashful. Make videos. 92% of people on Twitter will share, will retweet a video. The selfie videos only a minute in length as well. Yeah. You can be even a little shorter straight to the point. This is what I love. This is what I want to protect. You need to join me, you know, visit blah, 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 or, um, this is what I've lost um, through climate change, through flooding. Um, just tell your stories. People want to hear real human stories. Yeah, you know, all this suspicion about news, um, number one, makes me crazy, but also reinforces the idea that if the story is coming genuinely from you and not being filtered through news channels, etc., you'll actually get a lot more trust. That's Unfortunately, but why this is just so important is that we're doing these dialogues and you all, all know this we're having these conversations on facebook and that's not where the politicians are you know so our our energy is being well it's an emotional release which is partly why we're doing it but we're not actually targeting the people who need to listen um and so we need to all get on there and target those politicians and we need to get our neighbors on there and targeting those politicians 
Uh, there's two questions, one from Susan, how do we delete something? And then from David, can you edit a tweet once it's posted? Yeah, unfortunately, you cannot edit a tweet. Um, so the best thing you can do is if it's something very egregious you need to fix, just copy it, you know, copy what's there, delete it, and I'll show you how to do that now. Let's see, go back to sharing my screen. And then uh, repost it just quickly. So on Facebook, it does not allow you to do that. So there's a little drop down Chiron here, which allows you to do a variety of things. And the first option that comes up on a tweet that you've created is delete. You can also pin tweets to your profile. I know Anthropocene Alliance has done this. I think you have one pinned at the top. If you have something you want people to see that come to your feed, you pin it at the top and that's the first thing they will see. Okay, and I can see my tweet activity too. Twitter analytics is pretty cool. Nobody's looked at this one yet, so there's nothing to see. <laughs> what is in bed? Is that for your website? Yes, exactly. You'll get a little piece of code that'll help you just embed the tweet into a web page. There are so many things you can do with Twitter. I hesitate to get too far into things as people just get accustomed, but um, you're entering a world of wonder. Trust me. <laughs> Michelle, um, I have a question. Is there a, a way of measuring the participation in a Twitter storm? And yeah. how might one go about doing that? Yeah, so um, there's a variety of things to track. One is I see if the hashtag is trending. I also see how many times the hashtag was used. And um, basically with any Twitter page, there's uh, a tool called Twitter Analytics. If you are signed in to your Twitter page, it usually comes right up. Thank you. Let's see, there we go. Um, and this allows you to see a whole bunch of useful things. Were you planning to share the page? Oh, I'm so sorry. I do that occasionally with Zoom. There we go. So what I did was I typed Twitter analytics and analytics.twitter.com. And so this is my personal account. And so you start seeing, uh, wow, I have a lot of impressions. <laughs> Start seeing some activity here and there's more you can dig into. So you can go into the individual tweets. This allows you to see how many impressions. So reach is, is the most important thing from a social media perspective for me because that tells me even more than likes and retweets, that tells me how many more voices and eyeballs I'm getting. Um, and this breaks it down per tweet, okay? And then there's a cool thing an advanced search tool within Twitter that allows you to find out how many you can search on a specific hashtag, how much it was used. If you're doing that research on Twitter, you want to do it within about 24 to 48 hours because Twitter starts to kind of cast off information it doesn't need. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's why there's a whole industry of uh, software tools, online tools that allow you to analyze Twitter. It created a whole new market because they don't keep uh, a lot of historical information. So you wanna actively pursue your hashtag and things in the first 24 to 48 hours after your campaign to collect that information. But this search is amazing. Does that answer your question? It did, it did. And then I'm wondering in terms of outcomes of the effectiveness of our, of our Twitter storm, do they correlate? Well, here's, here's where the important thing is you need to set a goal. So the, that will help you analyze what's returned. So if the goal is, for example, the first Twitter storm we did with Rosewood, really it was just to get some reach for me because I knew we hadn't been able to really plan things with the community. So because the hurricane was happening, it was a great opportunity to just get the story out there. And I forget what we did, but we actually, oh, right, I couldn't look at your Twitter analytics. Um, but there's a chart there, like you see the number of impressions, that reach tells you that the message is getting out there. And remember, it takes about five times uh, for someone to see a message to start thinking about reacting to it sometimes, unless they're really passionate. So that's why we are pummeled with advertisements that repeat the same thing over and over again, because I know at some point it's going to start getting in there. It's the same thing on social media with any marketing effort. Um, you got to repeat, you got to hammer them over the head. 
Um, but you also need to give them something. So like I said, social media is a negotiation. People come to it because they want to be in the know. They want to be informed. They want to be able to take action on the things they care about. If you provide those things, they will meet you halfway. So unfortunately, I have to leave. Um, thank you so much for joining. If you've got any questions, I can you know, forward them on to Michelle. Um, if you start forming in your mind, you know, things that you want to, campaigns where you want help. So I'm, I'm looking right, right now, for example, at uh, Gabriella, who's stopping a development on wetlands, um, uh, Gloria, who's stopping a, the big build, as she calls it, um, Harriet uh, and the Charleston campaign, Cynthia, we need to get your fraud um, and manipulation of FEMA maps, get that some profile. Um, who else? Well, Virginia, you, you've got many developments. So th those are the projects that I know um, you know, let's, let's figure out how to get them into campaigns and uh, how we can use Twitter to help do that. But Virginia, I'm actually a fan of your Sorry? I wanted to let Virginia know I've been a fan of hers. I've been watching her uh, Facebook videos and you're, you're awesome. You basically got it nailed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have some major storytellers. Gabrielle has just done two fantastic videos. Um, uh, Gloria is a great Facebook um, live person. So we need to get that onto, onto Twitter. That's the thing. Absolutely. And you know, they complement each other. Facebook and Twitter have different modes and, um, you can use them both and I'm happy to help with all kinds of things. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much, Michelle. Really, really appreciate it. And thank you everyone else and look forward to doing lots of tweets. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead. We're on. I'm going to put my email in the chat really quickly. Anybody oh, have I any think direct questions? Oh, I think gone. I'll, I'll, I can send it. Yeah. And feel free to contact Harriet and Harriet knows where to find me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank Be you. safe out there. Thank you. Bye. Can you put your Twitter, put your Twitter handle in the chat real quick? Yeah. <laughs> I have to right. look at that strangely because I keep forgetting what I did. At M. Julius. Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> At M. Julius. Now, my last name is Flemish. Forgive me. G I E L I S. Okay. I'm 100% Belgian. So, okay. Thank you. We'll follow you back. All okay. right. I'll work on it. <laughs> Thank you, Bye. everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.